I'm Rob Teal. My passion is restoring and modifying old cars. With over 35 years experience in the industry, I'm now bringing to you some of my methods and techniques I use every day in my restoration shop. Throughout your project, you're going to have to make numerous little pieces that fit into all sorts of places all over the car. And a lot of these can be shaped with simple hand tools. But in order to make successful parts, you really need to know what's happening in the piece of steel as you're shaping it. And at that point, that's when metal shaping becomes really interesting. Today I'm going to walk you through a few simple little profiles, and we're going to start with this one down here. With any rust repairs, there's always going to be more than one option. So today we're just going to be looking at the small piece down here. And as you can see, it's rotted through, there's a lot of little holes in it. And you could just do it by welding it up. You can sit there with a welder and go zap, 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 zap all those little holes up. It'd be painful, but it'll fix the problem. We could also fiberglass it. It's been sandblasted, it's been painted, it's been treated. And this is only a little gutter and a window flipper in here. That would work too. But we're going to metal shape a new piece of wood in there. So we're going to cut it off through here and we're going to make this whole corner. Now to do that, we're going to have to do a few processes. Everything we do to introduce shape into a flat piece of metal involves one or both of two things, shrinking and stretching. So today I'm going to talk entirely about shrinking and stretching. Now I know a few of you are thinking that I can always fold a piece of metal, that's not shrinking or stretching, but it actually is. If we look at the fold more closely, this face has shrunk, this face has stretched. So once again, the fold is just shrinking and stretching. Now if we come back to the piece we're going to make, we're going to have to do a little bit of stretching and a little bit of shrinking. So where we do these straight folds on the sides, we're going to shrink the inside edge and stretch the outside edge. The biggest problem is, is this corner up the top. Where we've actually got to bring this outside edge in and make it smaller all the way around. We're going to do that by planishing with a planishing hammer. Now because this piece is a little bit rotten, we've also got to reinforce it because if we start clamping a piece of metal with that and hammering away on it, it's going to distort this original piece and we're not going to have an accurate template. So what I'm going to do is set it up in a vise with a few supports and then I'll show you how to get started on it. I've got the item set up in the vise now and a new piece of material has been roughly trimmed to the shape of the original car part. Now I'm using 18 gauge cold roll steel or here in Australia commonly referred to as one millimetre. Now the cold rolled steel is the stuff that comes with no paint, no material on it at all. And if you leave it for a few weeks, it goes rusty just like that. So all my material I paint, so I get it to preserve it, and then I work it from there. Now, I have cut a piece of 1.6 or 14 gauge material roughly to the shape to reinforce the rusted area. That's reinforcing the area that was rusted out behind. This thicker piece of steel is just a spacer that I've put between the vise and our workpiece so that the vise isn't crushing any of the other parts of the panel. So now we're going to clamp a little piece of material on the back of our new part because once again Isaac Newton is going to be sticking his oar in and every action has an equal and opposite reaction and that creates problems for metal shapes. So if I clamp that on the back, that will reinforce the corner and we can get started. Now if I start hammering this corner over and bringing it down, we're going to be stretching the piece of metal ahead of us. And if we keep working our way up to the corner like that, we've already stretched either side of this beam. Now this corner is the biggest area we've got to shrink, so we've got to minimise that. Now there's always many ways you can do it. You could probably start with the corner and bring that down that'll work well. Or you could use a small block of wood and bring down an area at a time to minimise the stretch on the piece of material beside it. But for this small piece, I'm just going to use the planishing hammer and just sort of work it as we go. But we only want to move it a little bit at a time because that will minimise the amount of stretch we get in this top edge. So if we start at one spot and work our way all the way around, I'm not hitting it very hard, I'm just letting the weight of the hammer do the work. It's more or less just rocking in my wrist. And as you can see, 
piece of metal is rolling around. Always be thinking in your mind about what's happening to the piece of metal. We're shrinking this area around here. We're stretching the back face around that pole. We're shrinking this edge up in there. Once you sort of come to understand that, and you're thinking about this unconsciously while you're working, that's when you'll start making some big difference with metal shaping. This far, and because I only roughly cut my piece of material to shape, you can see I've got extra material at the back there. Well, that's all extra material we've got to shrink to make this happen. So at this point now, we can just simply trim it off and we can be reducing the amount of work we have to do. by working that corner just how malleable the steel is and it's coming into shape and it's shrinking down nicely to form the original shape. We don't want to be hitting it hard enough that we're bending our original pattern, we just want to bring our piece of metal up. backwards and forwards. Now that's the natural spring in this piece of metal. So to get it the last little bit, we've actually got to lock that out and force the metal to shrink. We're just going to clamp this piece of scrap to this face down the back here and that'll reinforce the corner and then I can work the top edge and bring it in to match the original. See from this just how quickly the piece of metal has worked into shape. Now at no point did I belt my piece of metal really hard with the hammer. I was just letting the hammer do the work and the weight of the tool just swinging in my hand and coming down and tapping the piece of metal. Now that's got our replacement piece pretty much made. It's just a matter of trimming it to shape cutting the old end off the panel, welding it on, and that job's done. So that was made in a few minutes. That's just how simple and easy a lot of these components are. Here we have the finished piece, and all I have to do is draw a line around it, trim it to shape, cut the original panel off, weld in place, and this job's finished. We're going to look at another spot that's quite easy to repair. Now this corner's rusted away in the past because the outside skin is butted up against the inside frame. The moisture's run down from inside the car, and it's sat in its bottom corner and it's rusted the two layers of it. Now I've previously made this piece from beating it over the top of the original, but I did actually use a few machines to get some of the shape in it, so it doesn't really count as a easy made with hand tools sort of item, but you'd get it close, and probably if you're stuck at home and you have nothing else, if you put a weld down there and made it in two pieces, it would work really well. So today, we're going to look at the frame piece on the inside. Now this being the pillar of the car, it's a little bit heavier material. So it's actually 1.2mm or 16 gauge material. Now same thing again, I'm going to use a piece of cold rolled metal to make it. But I've quickly made a flexible temper. Now, you can make these out of cereal packets, whatever. It just gives you the shape that you need to make it. And instead of sitting there and trimming away little bits of metal and things like that, you're cutting away too much material. If you make a template, have a piece of cardboard first, it just gives you an accurate pattern to cut the material to the first time around. 
Now, it's also going to show you what we need to do as far as shrinking and stretching. Now, this exercise is mostly stretching. So, where the line's roughly straight, it's going to fold around the corner quite easily. But when we get down to here, it's tight on this top edge. We've got to stretch this whole edge down here to make it work. And if we force the cardboard, it's just going to tear. So that'll give you an idea of how much it's got to grow. So there's a good quarter of an inch there that we're going to have to stretch out this inside edge. Now, because we're going to cut down the front edge and weld down here, work within the capabilities of the piece of material. Normally, a bit of material like this will actually, you can roll around half an inch usually quite easily. Sometimes you have problems, sometimes you'll get a little lump in the back of it. And in those cases, you come back, you can go with three eighths of an inch, so 10 mil or something like that. But I'm confident on this radius that we're going to fold that around there quite easily. Now, I can't clamp this to the car because it's a box section, so I'll put a few tech screws in just to hold it in place. Now, what might not be obvious is it bends both ways. So there's actually a bit of a curve coming out this way in the pillar as well. So we're going to duplicate that because we're going to form it over the original. So I'll just spot him back on and we'll get into it. Now I'm going to start working the edge of this and I'll be using my wooden mallet. These are often called a lead dresser. You can get them in nylon these days and they work just as well. But I've had this one for 25 years or so. The wooden ones stand up very well and they do a good job. So we'll start working this. Same thing as when we're shrinking, little bit by little bit, because we don't want to stress the metal in any one spot too much, but we'll just work our way around it. I've just done a couple of little passes through there, and I haven't actually bent it very far, but one thing you've got to be aware of is when you're hitting it, don't hit it right on the top edge because that's going to create a bulge ahead of where we want it to fold. You need to be hitting it as close to the fold as possible and then you're making that outside edge stretch. So you're hitting at the back and you'll hear the deeper thunk when it actually hits the original underneath it. So just out from that corner works really well. You may notice this little split down the bottom. That's actually because the piece of material actually ends there. I'll just let this piece on there because I'll trim it later. But it might as well get rolled around there, so that's for no other reason. We'll just do a couple more passes now, and we'll get it to roll around a little bit more. It's actually starting to pick this corner up just down here, so it either needs a clamp or a you know, tech screw down here. If it had still has a rocket panel on it, we can put a screw in it, but we can put a clamp on it quite easily, we'll do that. But just the same as in my welding videos, and I say when you're welding, stay in control of your weld. When you're shaping, stay in control of your piece of metal. If it starts doing something strange, stop and address it. Work out whether you're stretching it or shrinking it or whether you need to shrink it somewhere else to correct the problem where you're actually working, but stay in control of it. So I'll just grab a clamp and we'll put that on there and then we'll come back and mend it some more. I'll put my clamp on and I'm just about to start working the edge again. So we'll do another couple of passes and the same thing, a little bit by little bit and work the whole length of it. See, it's all starting to take shape nicely now and it's going to work really well. It's going to lay down flat. This edge is going to stretch all the way along and we'll get a perfect recreation of the original. Now a few of you might be thinking at home that I can't afford a flash hammer like that Rob and I don't know what to do, I can't hit it with anything. So for all you guys at home who can't afford a flash hammer, you can do it with a piece of wood. So here's a piece of wood that I've just laid this the end on and it will work just as well. Like I said before, there's always more than one way to create a rust repair patch. Just always check this outside face because once again Isaac Newton will probably stick his oar in and sometimes you can wind up with like a bulge on this side 
because you've been working that corner. So every option, every action having an equal and opposite reaction is always a pain for us. So we'll just get this going with a metal hammer now, just to turn it right down. from that nice solid whack 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 noise that that's home all the way around. So that's a patch that we've made. The only thing we've got left to do is where it sits on top of the rocket panel is folded in on itself. Now that's pretty easy to do. We can put that in a vise and bend it in a vise with a planishing hammer quite easily. We can put in a vise and we can bend it over the side of a block of wood. Okay, so trimming the piece of material in the shape we wanted, cutting the original of the car away, Welding a new piece in there. And that's another small rust repair patch, just made quickly and easily at home. Here's another area that I've been working on for a while on this car, and it's not completed yet, but it's a very complicated shape. It's bottom of a pillar, and it's in heavy material. This is 1.6 thick, or 14 gauge material, so it takes a bit of work. And I've been using some zinc and needle material for this, not because it's better, it's because I already had it. Zinc and needles high tensile, so it's actually a lot harder to work with, but it's still workable. And I've got radiuses into it, I've got curves into it, and this was entirely made with simple tools, but because of the weld, you can see I'm making it multiple pieces. So from here, I'm actually going to weld it to the bottom of the pillar in the right place, and then I'll be filling in the gaps. I'll be making duplicate sections from the original, and then welding it in piece by piece to get the alignment right. So sometimes, complicated pieces, you need to make them a lot of this pieces. The next thing is, there's an inner panel that fits into the same area. So that fits up inside the scuttle in here. This, apart from one fold across there, is made with very simple tools. So I'll show you a few little tricks about making these. And the same idea also works on a few other cars. So we'll talk about that in the beginning. And this little lip that I've thrown up all the way around this edge here was just done with a pair of vice screws and a hammer and dog. So I'm going to demonstrate that on this piece of material here. And another good place that this comes in handy is if you own a Mustang or a Falcon or Fairlane or something like that, either end of the plenum, there's a couple of little upstands where the air comes into the car. And Ford made a little top hat that they pressed over a flange and sealed it with a bit of goo. But over the years, the ceiling material breaks down and moisture gets in there, and everyone I've pulled apart has been completely rusted away. So, when repairing those, I just weld a flat panel in and don't worry about the hole. I cut the hole later and then mark a half inch marking all the way around it to the diameter of the little upstand. And then I just form the edge with a pair of vice grips. So, all you have to do is just get the vice grips, and you don't want them locked on real tight, but you want to bite a little bit. So you just come up to the mark, just clamp it on, and just do a little bit of a bend. And that'll start lifting that inside edge up. Now it's the same thing, a little bit at a time, and keep working your way around it. And you always keep in mind what you're doing, because as we come into this corner on this radius, we're stretching the inside edge around here. So that's the area we've got to work. So these are our tight spots. But because I'm carrying this piece of metal in my hand and it's not well pinned to a car, it is going to want to curl a bit. So I'm going to have to stay in control and I'm going to have to work a few times to actually keep it flat. So we'll go around a few times and then we'll just talk about that as it happens. Coming back in, I'll put a different radius on this end because some Fords have got a round cylinder poking up and others have got a rectangular shaped one. So I threw in a couple of different radiuses just for the hell of it. But you can see the metal stretching, it's lifting on the inside edge. And I'm not putting a lot of effort into it at all. I'm not straining to bend it. I'm just letting the metal stretch. You just go the width of the jaw each time. It won't take long to throw on the heat metal. I'm 
coming back into one of the tighter radiuses again. And this is just a handy trick to know the little one-off situations because you can use it in a variety of locations. The style of metal shaping where you're just using basic hand tools, your imagination is probably the, the biggest thing you can have in your favour. So if you can think of something, usually it's going to work. Once you've been doing it for a while, you can look around your workshop, and pretty much everything you see is going to be a metal shape. Uh, we're on our second pass, and that's all we're already well and truly on the way to where we want it. So it doesn't actually take a huge amount of time to make a good looking part. But once again, because this panel's not supported, it's starting to curl it up. So we'll work out in a minute and get it back flat again, stay in control of it. And had this been welded into a plenum, it wouldn't be an issue. If I was making another one of these with a smaller lip on it, it wouldn't be an issue because it just isn't the strength in there, it will actually stretch really quite well through. Two passes around there now, and we've distorted the piece of metal. So what we'll do is I'll find something to hammer that back flat on, and then we'll do a bit more. And because I was hammering the back up here, I was actually stretching this side of a piece of metal. We'll go back with our vice grips and we'll do a little bit more angle thing. Oh, oh. Now we're going to Because this is not supported in the car, it's curling it right up. But in a situation where it is part of the plenum, at this point I'll start working with the hammer and dolly to bring it up the last bit. So I'm going to clamp the edges of this to simulate that it is welded in part of the car, and then I'll start working it, and then we'll get the rest of it done. Well, I've just got this clamped down, so for this exercise, we'll just imagine that these are really big spot welds and it's all part of a car. So what I'm going to do now put my dolly up against the fold line and then we're going to work it with the hammer to actually start stretching this edge out around as we go. So naturally, when we get into the corners, we'll be using the pointy end of the hammer and on the more flat areas, we can use the flat face. So it'll be a matter of switching as we're going, but it'll bring this up quite nicely. starting to stretch the metal.
And you can see the heavy stretching that's gone on from the hammering it in that way. But you can see also how quickly that this style of work will lift this up and make a nice little upstand for your plenum. Here we have another technique that allows us to quickly and easily form panels by hand at home. Now while we're talking about shrinking and stretching, if you can afford it guys, get yourself some of these. Now these are shrinkers and stretchers and they're great for lots of little jobs where you're making corners and bits and pieces and where you want to put curves into pieces of metal along the edges. So just a quick demonstration, one's a shrinker and it's got a set of jaws that actually pulls them in together and bunches it up and when you work this one it'll shrink an edge and make a curve. But the limitations are is that if you're trying to pull in a big edge like this one here it's going to bunch the metal up ahead of it and make a few lumps and bumps. It's pretty easy to actually get a hammer and dolly and flatten it back out again and shrink that area down in there that'll work or depending on what you're making if you try throwing up a smaller edge that'll push the bond a lot faster. So now I've put the small edge in here, that's making that shrink a lot quicker. If you're making a radius to match an original, if you sit it on top of the original on a rocks, that's the point where it needs a bit more shrinking, that's the high spot. So if you keep working on that until you get the radius just right, it'll just snug onto the original. The other thing is, with the stretcher, it does the opposite effect. It's got a pair of jaws that pulls apart. So as soon as you put it in the stretcher and start working it, it goes the other way to make the reverse. So these days they're quite inexpensive. You can buy them online quite easily. There's a lot of parts suppliers carrying them out and they do work quite well. If your budget doesn't extend to those and you've got a sheet metal worker in the area, you can get yourself sections that are pre-folded. Now a good one is to give yourself say three quarters of an inch on the bottom by about three eighths, so say 20 mil by 10. And that's quite bendable because you can actually shake that with your hands. And we're shrinking the edge in there like that. We've made a nice radius like that. And then, if you're going to join it onto something else, you simply cut the panel you're going to weld it to at the same radius, and then put your row of weld across there, and you've made yourself a nice inner panel. Now, getting back to inner panels, particularly rear quarter panels and a lot of cars will have a quarter panel where this is the inner section and this is the outer section and the two will spot welded along the bottom for one piece. Now often there's a little drain hole in there and I'll show you how to make the drain hole. Now the drain holes inside the inner quarter panels on a lot of cars are little rectangular slots and about 20 years ago I made this set of tools. One of them broke the other day, I had to weld back together. But the, um, the principle is, you just put in the vise and squash the edge of your piece of metal through it and it puts that nice little rectangular drain hole in it. So I'll set him up and we'll give it a crack and I'll show you how it works. Now it's pulled up in the vise, you can see the bit of distortion it's thrown on the side, but that'll just easily hammer out. pulling that edge away as I'm hammering. When you pull it out, it will have bent it a little bit this way, but once again, back in the vise and we can straighten that out. Okay, so there's your little drain hole made for your inside quarter pan. And there's a piece of metal on there to just sort of simulate the outside quarter panel as it would be on the car. So 
when you put it together, a few plug welds either way, and you've got a really factory looking piece. Today we've talked about basic shrinking and stretching, and the reality is we've only just scratched the surface. Every possible shape you can make into a piece of sheet metal comes from shrinking or stretching or a combination of both. We've also made a couple of pieces for my car, I'm pretty happy about that. Hopefully, this information will help you in your projects, and in future videos, we'll just keep expanding on the theories and bringing you more and more as we move along. I'm Rob Teal, thank you for watching.